Hi, this is Chris with Fisher Workshops in Taiwan. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make a very detailed and beautifully crafted leather hip bag. For a small fee, you can download a PDF file with the pattern, instructions, and required tools for this project at fisherworkshops.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's start by first tracing out the centerpiece with the scratch all. Then moisten the leather with water and wait 5 minutes before stamping. Using a texture tool of your choice, begin stamping in and around your traced line. When you're finished and the leather is dried, we can then apply some dye to the leather. After tracing and cutting out the body for my bag, I can begin to draw out my stitching grooves with my groover. Be patient and take your time to make sure you don't slip and damage your cover. Using my pattern template, I first mark where I need to start and stop my outer stitching grooves. Next, let's draw out stitching grooves on the bag's gusset. Do this for both sides of the gusset. Next, draw out stitching grooves on the back cover. Now let's do the same for the pocket front. Again we'll do the same for the exterior belt strap. Now I'll use an edger to trim the areas we are going to bevel later on. Notice at this point that I'm only trimming one side of the leather. Let's continue to do this for the illustrated pieces. Now using my pattern, I want to mark my stitching points onto the belt strap, and don't trim the edges beyond those marks. Now on the back cover for the centerpiece, trim front and back of the top section. Now thoroughly dampen the front and the back of the bag's gusset. Fold the gusset's smooth side facing out in half from top to bottom. Here, you can use a roller, glass jar, or mallet to apply the crease. Next, fold each end in half again and firmly roll down the crease.
Now let's mold the leather to the shape of our pocket and secure it with a little rubber cement. There, now we set it in place and it can be set aside to dry. Now let's mark where we need to punch holes on the interior belt strap. Next, apply a leather stain evenly in a circular motion until an even coat has been applied. After your stitch lines are drawn out and the pieces have been trimmed, you can begin to stain the pieces. Using the cutout centerpiece, trace around the back of the textured centerpiece and apply glue within the lines. To stain the gusset, simply spread the folds and rub the stain between the creases. After the stain is dried, apply a flat or glossy sheen. I usually apply three to five coats of sheen until I achieve my desired results. Apply a little slicking gum to the edges and use a slicker to burnish. On a hard surface, use the pointed end of the slicker to burnish the edges. Here's how it should look after slicking. Now I want to mark where my logo will go and the hole where my rope will be attached. To strengthen the hole, I will attach an eyelet. Now I'll stamp my logo onto the label. Using some rivets, I will attach the label to the body of the bag.
Use some leather glue to adhere the decorative center piece to the body of the bag and let it set until dry. Using a stitching chisel, punch stitching holes along the stitching groove we drew earlier. Using a stitching horse, saddle stitch the center onto the body. Punch a hole and attach your concha. Next, attach the rope and beads as illustrated. Now mark where the belt will be attached to the body. Now apply several coats of sheen to the rest of your pieces. Attach the buttons to the belt interior using a press or an inexpensive button attachment tool. These tools can be purchased at most craft stores or leather craft stores. On the exterior belt piece, use a stitching chisel to punch holes along the stitching groove. Glue the two pieces together, being careful not to apply too much glue to the edges.
After the cement has had a couple of minutes to set, attach two ends together. Using a pair of hole punching pliers, punch holes through to the other side. Using a stitching horse, saddle stitch the ends together as illustrated. Leave the end that will be attached to the body unstitched. Smooth the edges until even with the sander. Apply a burnishing gum to the edges and use your wood slicker to burnish the edges. Carefully roughen the surface where adhesive will be applied and the belt will be attached. Use a stitching chisel to punch the remainder of the stitching holes. To finish, saddle stitch the belt to the bag body. Follow the illustration to close your stitch.
Here's how it should look when you reach this point. Burnish the interior cover with your wood slicker and apply adhesive to the cover and bag body and attach. After you finish punching your stitching holes, then go ahead and saddle stitch the front together. If necessary, sand the edges until even, then apply a burnishing gum and slick until smooth. Now let's attach the folded gusset to the pocket front.
carefully cut off the excess leather. Let's now burnish the front pocket of the bag. Now using a three or one prong stitching hole punch, work your way around the gusset and the pocket. Now saddle stitch the gusset to the front pocket. Sand the edges and burnish to a shine. Before you attach the front pocket onto the bag body, punch holes for your tassels. Fix your eyelids to the holes you punched in the gusset. Now attach the front pocket onto the body of the bag.
After punching stitching holes, saddle stitch the pocket to the body's bag, sand, and burnish. Here's how it should look at this point. Cut six long strips of matching leather to attach his tassels. Tie the tassels on as illustrated. After both ends have been tied, cut off the excess leather. When finished, you should have a beautifully crafted hip bag.